I decided to go into the computer business uh, in college. I, I started working working part time uh, programming. I, I found that I found it in, in a very short period of time. I could make more money writing programs than uh, a tenured professor at the University of Chicago was making. And I was you know, a teenager, and I said, "This is kind of cool." And uh, it was also fun. It was like a big game. It was like working on puzzles. So I enjoyed it. It paid extremely well. I could work at home. I could work at my own hours. No one quite, you know. Uh, and, and the computer, and I closely associated with computers because they were absolutely a slave to reason. They knew nothing about fashion. They were completely logical. And I enjoyed spending time with them. So I liked what I was doing. It was very profitable. It was very creative. And it was also giving me immediate feedback. I could start writing a program and within a, several hours, I could have a result. You know, Freud defines Maturity is the ability to, to, to defer gratification, and the great thing about programming is you don't have to be mature at all, because you don't have to defer gratification for more than a few hours. You get, you get wonderful, tight feedback, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, uh, like that's, that's, and that's characteristic, by the way, of games and sports. The reason why games and sports are so popular is because you win or lose very quickly. You get immediate feedback. Uh, it's a very tight loop. You don't wait hours or days or, or years before you find out if you're winning or losing. You find out find, a second and a, half, and a half after you release that basketball, you know whether it's gone in or not. It was in school and they noticed when I was writing programs for school that I was like, I was getting done faster than everybody else. So they offered me, you know, they offered me a job, you know, offered me a job. Uh, and I figured out very, very quickly that rather than being paid by the hour, I was much better off being paid by the program. <laughs> so I, I figured that, so I, I was working for the university and then I, I started doing consulting for, for local businesses. And uh, that worked very well. I don't think my personality has changed much since I was five years old. Uh, I think, you know, as I explained to the kids just a little while ago, uh, probably the single most important aspect of my personality and as far as determining my success has been my uh, my questioning of conventional wisdom my doubting of experts just because they're experts and questioning of authority and while that can be very very painful in terms of your relationship with your parents and your relationship with your teachers it's enormously useful in life I was uh, adopted with my own within my own family when I was nine months old I was I was uh, born in New York City. Uh, my mother was 19, she wasn't married, uh, and uh, really was unable to care for me. I tried, tried until I was nine months old, and then I was adopted by my maternal aunt and uncle in Chicago, and moved to Chicago, the south side of Chicago. You know, I'll never, never, never again complain about a bad neighborhood, moving from the Lower East Side of Manhattan to a still worse, worse neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. So after, after my ninth month, I kept my mouth shut about the neighborhood. I believed until I was 12 years old that, uh, that I was not adopted. I had no idea that I was adopted within, within, within my own family. Uh, so again, I, I don't attribute very much of my life, my personality to my adoption. I, I do attribute it, uh, an awful lot to my relationship with my father, uh, who was uh, a Russian immigrant, came, uh, came here, was very, very poor. I uh, dearly loved this country as only an immigrant can. Uh, loved our government as only an immigrant can. He was a, he was a pilot uh, in uh, World War II, uh, bomber pilot. He, uh, he really had the philosophy, my country right or wrong. He never questioned the government's policies, never questioned authority, and didn't really want me to question authority. Uh, I had some teachers when I was very, very young that I, that I thought were telling me things that weren't true. And when I tried to ask questions, they basically wanted me to respond, basically you know, parrot back what they said. They really weren't interested in a discourse with a child or a debate with a child. They said, this was true, and you are smart if you can repeat it back to me exactly what I said to you. And I had a real problem with that as well. So I, I had very strong authoritarian figures, both in school uh, and at home, which served as wonderful examples of how not to be. My mom was supportive, and I, and I had a mixture of teachers. Some, some of the teachers were wonderful, and some of the teachers were awful. But the awful, teach, the awful teachers served a good purpose in terms of being a bad, you know, bad example. All examples are good. Bad examples are useful. Good examples are useful. And uh, it taught me to question experts, uh, to question authority uh, figures. Don't assume just because they're an authority, or even just because they're an expert, that they're right. In other words, think things out for yourself. Come to your own judgments. Don't simply conform 
uh, to conventional ways of thinking, conventional ways of dressing, conventional ways of acting. That a lot of this, uh, a lot of things are, are based on fashion. Even morality at times is based on fashion. It was once, fa you know, slavery was once not considered not to be immoral. Uh, you know, people are, you know, people are shocked that the, uh, the ancient Greeks had slaves, that, that we had slavery in this country as recently as, you know, 130, 140 years ago. So there are more moral facts. You have to really go back to first principles and think things out for yourself, whether they're scientific principles or moral principles or business ideas or product ideas. You have to think things out for yourself.